Hello, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the Let Us Reason video series, and we're still going through the topic of Tawheed Dilemma. And uh, this time, we've been focusing on the title Messiah as applied to Christ. And last time, as you will see right now on the screen, we were uh, basically unpacking not only a Quranic passage from chapter 3, verse 45, but also uh, Sam made reference to a number of uh, biblical passages that you will see right now in front of you. One uh, from Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7, where, for instance, Jesus, or at least the promise of this Messiah, he is called the mighty God in Daniel chapter 7, 13 to 14. He is the son of man that is worshipped by all people. And uh, in Psalm 110, uh, verse 1, he is the Lord of David who sits on the throne of Yahweh. With that says, Sam, <clears throat> welcome back and pick it up from here, brother. Well, by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray we do justice to these topics. So now we want to see how Jesus <clears throat> understood these Old Testament prophecies, how he explained them, how he interpreted them. So remember the three you cited, Isaiah 9, a child born, sits on David's throne as the mighty God, David's Lord who sits enthroned with Yehovah in heaven, and then the Son of Man of Daniel, who rides a cloud, something only God does, who has an eternal kingdom that's indestructible, worship by all. I'm going to go to Mark 12, 35, 37 to see what our Lord says. And we're going to contrast that with the Quran. So don't forget, the Quran says Jesus is Messiah. According to the Old Testament, we've just documented Messiah is God in the flesh, distinct from God. Yet that's there's right. still one God, right? That's, that's right. Old Testament, right? Now let's see what Jesus does with these prophecies to see whether he agrees with the understanding of Muslims that Messiah is just a man or is he God in the flesh, distinct from God, yet one with him. Now, Mark 12, 35, 37. <clears throat> and Jesus answered and said while he taught in the temple. Mark 12, 35, 37. How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? Because that's what they believe because the Old Testament says Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, will be a descendant of David. For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Lord said to my Lord, now he's quoting Psalm 1101, he's saying, David wrote this by the Holy Spirit inspiring him. The Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Footstool. David therefore himself calleth him, calleth them Christ, the Messiah, Lord, and whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Now he's presenting a dilemma for them. If the Messiah was merely a human descendant of David, no mere human son could be greater than his earthly father. That's At right. best, he could be a co-regent, meaning ruling with his father, but he could never surpass his father. He'll always be subject to his father. But David says, the Messiah is my Lord. So he's presenting a dilemma for them. How can he be just the son of David if he's also David's Lord? Because if all he is is a human son, he cannot be his Lord. They didn't have the answer. We do. Jesus is trying to show that though he's a physical descendant of David, he's more than a man. He's David's Lord because he's the eternal Son of God, one with the Father who becomes flesh. Because he's God, he's greater than David. But notice Jesus affirms that David calls Messiah Lord. David, by the Spirit inspiring him, revealing to him, says, Messiah is my Lord. We're going to come back to that in a minute see why that's important. So according to Jesus, Psalm 1101 is about the Messiah. Who's the Messiah? Jesus is. Both Jesus, his followers, and the Quran agree Jesus is the Messiah. So don't forget this, Al. If he's the Messiah and David by the Spirit worship Messiah as his Lord, then here we have proof that the Messiah can't be a mere human being. He must be more than a man. He must be David's Lord, his sovereign, his superior in the flesh. And the Quran agrees Jesus is the Messiah. See the dilemma? That's right. It's going to get worse. Mark 14, 61, 62, the high priest <clears throat> puts Jesus under oath and he says to him, <clears throat> Again, the high priest asked him, Mark 14, 61, 62. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Are you the Messiah, al Messiah? But notice, to be Messiah is to be the Son of the Blessed. If you're the Christ, you're the Son of God, right? And um, that's right. The high priest wasn't really denying the fact that the Messiah is the, the Son, Son of, of God. The high, yeah, he was denying you know, that Jesus that's is. That's right, exactly. What is Jesus' answer? And Jesus said, I am. I oh. am what? Are the you, Messiah, the Son of the sure, Blessed. Sam, oh, no, it's corrupt Jesus the Scripture. Jesus said that. No, it's okay. corrupt the Scripture. Well, All we right. have to do a topic on whether the Quran says the Bible is corrupt. So what did Jesus say? He didn't say, hey, don't call me the Son of the Blessed. I'm the Messiah, but I'm not the Son of the Blessed. That's right. This stands in stark contrast, contradiction to chapter 9, verse 30 of the Quran, where it says, the Nasada, the Christians say, the Messiah is the Son of Allah. And then it says, Allah fight them for saying that. They're perverse. They're perverted. 
Here Jesus says, I, the Messiah, the Christ, am the Son of God. And he adds the Son of Man on top oh, of that. Well, it gets even better. Yeah. I know you're, you're, you're rushing, you know, I know you want to be a doctor, I have a lot of patience, but I we're going to get there. I know, I am, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power. So here you have Son of Man of Daniel sitting on the right hand of power, Psalm 110, coming in the clouds of heaven. So Jesus took Daniel 7, the Son of Man who comes in the clouds of heaven, Psalm 110, 1, David's Lord who sits at God's right hand, and combined them together in reference to himself. So he's saying, I am that Son of Man of Daniel, who rides the clouds of heaven, and I am the Messiah, David's Lord, who sits at God's right hand. So according to Jesus, Psalm 110, 1, Daniel 7, 13 and 14 is about him, the Messiah, the Son of Man who rides the clouds, who sits on God's throne as a co-occupant of the throne, who rides right. the clouds of heaven. Therefore, he is that Messiah who rules forever, whom all nations must worship. So David calls him Lord. Daniel sees him riding the clouds of heaven, ruling forever and all nations worshiping him. Now, why is that a problem for the Muslims? If you can, go to the Quran and read for us chapter 3, verse 79 to 80 of the Quran. If you can read that for And us. by the way, I want to just point one thing, which I'm sure we can talk about in the future. Even the Quran acknowledges that only Allah comes on the clouds. Yes, that's in chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. That's right. When he comes in the shadows of the clouds with the angels, and yet that's what Jesus does. But now, remember, David, by the Holy Spirit, calls him my Lord, and Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Blessed, who sits on God's throne in heaven, right? Let's see what the Quran says about that. Chapter 3, verse 79 to 80. Okay, so uh, chapter 3, verse 79, uh, we read, It belongs not to any mortal that God should give him the book, the judgment, the prophethood, then he should say to men, be you servants of me apart from God. Rather, be you masters in that you know the book and in that you study. That's verse 79. Verse 80, he would never order you to take the angels and the prophets as lords. What would he order you to disbelieve after you have surrendered? So now the Quran says, no prophet would order people to serve him, worship him. And no prophet or angel would order people to take them as lords. But here Jesus said, David, by the Holy Spirit, called the Messiah, Jesus, my Lord. Daniel says that the Messiah, Jesus, is the Son of Man who rides the clouds of heaven, whom all nations must serve, so that since the Quran agrees Jesus is the Messiah, and since the prophets before Jesus said the Messiah is God's Son, who sits on God's throne, who is David's Lord, whom all nations must serve, that means Muhammad is a false prophet who's wrong. But then it gets better in 25 verse 2. What else does it say? In 25 verse 2 it says, uh, To whom belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, and he has not taken to him a son, and he has no associate in the kingdom, and he creates everything, then he ordained it very exactly. So Allah has no son and has no partner in his dominion over the heavens and the earth, right? What does 1826 say? 1826 say, say, Allah is best aware how long they tarried. His is the invisible of the heavens and the earth. How clear of sight is he and keen of hearing. They have no protecting friend beside him and he makes none to share in his kingdom. So no one shares in his kingdom. He has no son and no partner in his dominion. Daniel says the Son of Man is an eternal king whose kingdom is eternal, indestructible, rides the clouds whom all nations must serve and worship. David says the Messiah is my Lord who sits on God's throne. And Jesus says, I am that Lord of David and that Son of Man. I sit on God's throne as his son and I share in his kingdom and all must serve me the way they serve God. You have problems, Muslims, don't you? A lot of it. So if you call him the Messiah, and the Bible says this is what the Messiah is, God in the flesh, distinct from God, one with God, shares in his rule, sovereign over all creation, worshiped by all, I don't know what to tell you. Well, brother, we're running out of time. Yes. Um, what can we do in the next session, basically, to help our Muslim friends yes. recalibrate? We're gonna, we have one more final thing to say about the Messiah, and then say, see what the Quran says about Jesus' exaltation. Because although it says... Allah has no son who shares in his dominion. I'm going to prove to you from the Quran, Jesus is with Allah above the throne, from the Quran. Amen. Well, thank you, as always, uh, for your wonderful work, brother, and thank you for those who have been uh, watching, and please make sure you visit the previous uh, uh, 
sessions, basically, of this particular series, Tawheed Dilemma, part of our Let Us Reason uh, video series. Until we meet again, thank you and God bless. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.